In this video, I just want to provide students with an overview as far as working with Flexbox and how you can utilize it in multiple ways working in web design and development. Now, one of the examples that comes from our textbook is being able to create an entire web layout. However, again, be careful whenever you're doing this, as whenever you're working with Flexbox, it often works with more, we'll say, simplistic type of layouts here. While you can do a lot with it as far as the layout goes, you do want to keep in mind as far as your organization between each of the individual elements of the web page here. So just to take you through what I did, and this will be included as far as if you'd like to play around with the HTML and CSS, there's actually three different assets that are being utilized to create this basic web page. Number one is notice up in the head tag here. Not only do I have to link as far as specific typefaces that I wanted from the Google API, but also on the side here, I wanted to demo some things that you could actually use one of the sidebars for. So even though my navigation is going across the top bar here, on the right hand side here, I decided to add a small Twitter feed as far as pulling from the MDN web docs Twitter feed. That comes from jQuery, which is one of the JavaScript libraries. You can learn a lot more about these both on the jQuery website, but also too on github.com. There are plenty of folks out there that make open source libraries using jQuery that will help you parse through and display different elements as far as working with an RSS feed. So those are all of the assets that I had to include up in the top here. And then from there, I can go over and start talking a little bit about your CSS and your stylization. Now by default, remember, you can start off with the all where we're setting the margin and the padding to zero and we're setting as far as our box sizing and our font sizes to 100%. But really where everything starts to occur is the moment we jump into that body tag where we do start setting up the flex display and as far as the directions are concerned. So what we're doing here is we're setting up multiple columns as far as each of the individual items. One of the big changes though, however, that I made was it had a set max width to about 80 EMs. If you wanted to take up the entire page in scale, we want to shift on over and have 100%. That way that bar for both your nav bar and your footer, but also as far as if you have a right area display, will be going across the page entirely. Some other items to point out is in the header tag. Once again, you're justifying as far as the flex start area for the display, and you're aligning the items in the center of the flex box. Then once again, here you can see just a friendly reminder as far as the Google API. Here I'm calling the specific text that I wanted to work with here. I'm also setting color, and now, even though you're working with Flex, you're also starting to add in some of the stylization as well. So some other things to point out that you want to be aware of is notice you have both the navigation, but then you have the nested nav UL, where specifically I want to draw your attention to and remind you of things that we've talked about in the past as far as your list style type, where you're saying none. So that way then you're not getting the bullet points whenever you're making each of these navigational items here as far as home, about, etc. And then for each of the list items, we're just adding in that extra padding so that we can actually have the overall spacing. And then overall you have as far as your main content area and then you're working with as far as how that is nested. If we go back to the HTML, you can see that you have a main area here up at the top, but then within that main area, we have multiple article elements. And then also you have a second section as far as the second article item. This helps as far as keeping control of each of the individual articles and also to allowing you to have these colored or these stylized title elements. And then from there in main though, this is where you get into the sidebars. Now, because of the jQuery that I have imported as far as reading the RSS feed, I just needed to have a div container inside the aside that assigned the ID to RSS feed. So with that, whenever you're going through here, 
you can see all of the different elements here. And I also went in and even went a little bit further because whenever you pull in an RSS feed, depending on how stylized it is, you may actually be dealing with listed items. So once again, I wanted to go in and make sure that I got off the list style type. I got rid of my bullet points. I also set a little bit of a margin to give myself some space at the top. And I wanted to sync it up to the rest of the article as far as the text areas. And so I switched over to Verdana as far as the overall layout. So each of these items here play an important role as far as going through and creating the entire layout. Flex, as you can see though, hopefully just by looking through and as you continue working with it, you're going to notice it's a much smoother layout. You don't have as much in the CSS styles as far as fighting with and having to determine relative and overflow and instead you have a much cleaner element as far as being able to go in and work with each of the elements there.